would like to take you above the clouds, into the airplane. When traveling, have you ever thought about what can be improved about the flying experience? Think about it for a moment. Some of you might think about passenger comfort or emissions. The aviation market is far from perfect, and I would like to discuss some ideas how this can be improved. Let's start with emissions. There are a lot of discussions going on how the carbon footprint of this industry can be reduced. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change shows that governments are committed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The aviation industry has defined ambitious goals to reduce these emissions by 2050. Today, more than one-third of emissions in aviation are caused by long-distance flights. Therefore, this market shows great innovation potential to reduce em emissions. Also, a long-distance flight means that you travel for a long time with very little space available. So let's talk about travel time and comfort. In 2016, London to Los Angeles was one of the routes with the highest number of long-distance passengers and a travel time of about 11 and a half hours. During this time, passengers usually can't do much else than trying to sleep. And these are the times for a direct flight. In 2016, more than 60% of passengers had to make one or more stops in between. From the passenger perspective, this is not very pleasant, if you think about it. A stopover can cause a lot of stress. Either your flights are so close to each other that you can hardly make it, or you have to wait for a very long time for your connecting flight. Why do we have to make these stops? An individual airline often does not have enough passengers to fly directly between two cities. During a stopover, passengers from different directions are bundled in order to have enough people for a long-distance flight. For these long-haul operations, each airline owns or leases its individual aircraft fleet. As a result, not all aircraft are in the air all the time, but parked at airports. For a long-distance aircraft, this is about six hours on average per day. From these examples, you can see that there are things that are not working well today. The question arises, what can we do to change things to the better? To reduce the ecological footprint of aviation. To use aircraft in a better way. And, at the same time, make a long-distance trip more enjoyable for passengers? These are big questions. I work in an interdisciplinary team of researchers. And at the beginning of this year, we joined our knowledge from different areas to tackle this complex challenge. We focused on a holistic approach to rethink the future of aviation by asking ourselves the following three questions. First, what do we have to change about the airline business model in order to increase the efficiency of the long-distance network? Second, which energy source is a feasible alternative to today's carbon-based fuels and reduces emissions? Third, what do the aircraft and cabin look like if we integrate both a new fuel option and a new business model? Let's start with the business model. We need a solution 
that reduces the number of stops for passengers and the time an aircraft is parked at the airport. What if we break up the aircraft airline ownership model and instead have a platform on which aircraft and seats can be shared? Airlines, as we see them today, may not be the predominant business model any longer. And that would be a real game changer. What will this new business model look like? Aircraft are no longer owned by individual airlines, but are shared among multiple providers. Imagine an aircraft nowadays flying from London to Los Angeles with airline A and then returning to London after it parked at Los Angeles for a couple of hours. In the future, this aircraft will not return to its origin London, but passengers traveling from Los Angeles to, let's say, Tokyo, will immediately board the plane and fly to their destination. Aircraft are no longer parked at the airport, but used right away for a different flight. With this sharing model, our simulation results show that we can reduce the current long-haul fleet by up to 480 planes, which is 27% of the overall long-haul fleet. Also, Passengers can be better pooled with this sharing model. Today, you can fly from London to Los Angeles using different airlines, either directly or with one or more stops in between. In the sharing model, since aircraft are no longer owned by particular airlines, the seats can be rented by anyone. An online platform, a bus company, and then sold to passengers. Just like people carpooling in the morning to get to work, passengers can be pulled on a flight between two cities. So instead of having five flights between London and Los Angeles at almost the same time, but by different airlines, and with all of them having empty seats, we can fill these seats and save one flight. Also, passenger pooling and aircraft sharing enable us to offer more direct connections to passengers. This means less stress, since you do not have to change flights in between. Now that we introduced significant changes to the business model and saw the, the positive effects of that, we move on to reduce the carbon footprint of the industry, the second pillar of our research. A feasible alternative to today's kerosene is liquid hydrogen. It has zero local CO2 emissions. And the production from renewable energy is scalable and cost-efficient. Also, compared to other alternative fuels, it can be produced at relatively low cost. But using it in the aircraft comes with major changes. This is why the development process of a new aircraft usually takes 10 years or longer. If we started today, we might see a liquid hydrogen aircraft flying after 2040. And then it does not replace all other aircraft right away. With only a small market share of this aircraft, our simulation results show that we can reduce emissions in aviation by up to 20% in 2050. It shows that liquid hydrogen has a positive effect on the ecological footprint of aviation. Now we have to ask ourselves, how do we design an aircraft that integrates both, 
liquid hydrogen as fuel, and sharing as business model. In the third pillar of our research, we therefore ask ourselves the question, what are the implications for aircraft design, and how will we spend our time in the air in the future? The integration of liquid hydrogen requires different sizing and handling. Due to these specific characteristics of liquid hydrogen, the tanks are located at the front and the rear of the plane. Today, these are integrated in the wings. Between these tanks is the passenger cabin. Since passengers would like to have more space available during the flight and different activities to do, the new aircraft has three different decks. The two upper decks provide seating opportunities for all passengers, with everyone getting as much space as in today's business class. You might be wondering how that's possible. Compared to the room you have in an aircraft today, seats can be better spread across two decks. You have more legroom available and can stretch out during the flight. Also, with passenger pooling, we can fill those empty seats. These can be offered by an online platform or a bus company. So there are benefits for all. The third lower deck includes several containers. You can compare the size of one container to a small coffee place in the city, with seating opportunities to enjoy a small meal or to have an espresso at the bar. The containers can be exchanged at the airport, just like today's cargo containers. During the day, Passengers would like to use a cafe, a restaurant, or a family playground. During the night, there might be additional need for sleeping cabins. A restaurant owner or hotel chain might get engaged in offering these services and containers. Passengers do not have to stay put in their seats anymore. They can choose different options and amenities a massive improvement compared to today. Flying is about connecting people and places, and it should be like that in the future without harming the environment. The ideas I showed have the potential to make flying more pleasant for the environment and for passengers, with a new business model that pools passengers and enables aircraft sharing making better use of the aircraft fleet and enabling more direct connections for passengers. With liquid hydrogen as energy source, that is a feasible alternative to today's kerosene and reduces emissions. And last but not least, with more legroom in the cabin and different activities to do during a long flight. At first, you may think that something like this is never going to happen. And it certainly won't within a day. But if you think about it, a lot of the ideas I talked about are already out there. Sharing, it's common with cars, flats, or even toolkits. And no one would have imagined this 20 years ago. So why not apply this model to air transport? And the use of, of hydrogen in the transport sector and other areas is also not new. It takes some bold steps to change the current aviation system, but it is not impossible. So let's get started working on these ideas and transform a sometimes rigid industry to tackle the challenges of today and tomorrow.